Hello, my name is Kazi Mehdi Hassan. Welcome to my presentation of EL6825 Pattern Recognition. The name of my project is Comparative Analysis of Feature Extraction Techniques for Character and Texture Recognition. First of all, I'm going to address the contents and outlines of the project presentation. I'm going to start with a brief introduction of like what is the feature extraction technique and what are the consequences of feature extraction technique in pattern recognition. Then uh, I'm going to discuss the feature extraction technique utilizing the character geometry. Moving on, we are going to discuss some of the artificial neural network techniques and uh, some of the techniques are known as the backpropagation neural network, the learning vector quantization and the self-organizing maps. Relatedly, um, I'm going to discuss some of the texture and texture recognition techniques. Uh, one of them is known as the gray level difference method. I'm going to discuss um, this technique. And uh, moving on, we're going to show the simulation results, uh, the graphics, the graphs, the probabilities. And um, we're going to compare all these different types of uh, feature extraction techniques. Finally, um, we're going to put the conclusion and the final remarks. So to start with, feature extraction is an integral part of pattern recognition, which is which uses the dimensionality of an image. Um, it successfully portrays the key characteristics as a compact feature vector. A simple assumption is made where the common attributes are understood to be present uh, more often so on in an item than other objects. Uh, identification of the common attributes are fairly direct about the statistics about the universe of all objects and assigned groups are known. It becomes very complex sometimes when the statistics about the item is inadequate. Uh, continuing on uh, feature extraction, uh, the functional and mechanized pattern recognition system demands two basic functions. So one of them is known as the feature extraction, which is like creating the attributes from an object which conveys the description task. The successful application of mechanized pattern recognition system is uh, character recognition. Comparative analysis presented for the geometry, neural networks, and gray level difference method. Uh, so the former two are known as the character recognition, and the gray level method is known as the uh, texture recognition. So first of all, I'm going to uh, discuss in details the feature extraction technique using the character geometry. So there are some basic assumptions that uh, we have made for this process. The first of all is that like based on the alphabet geometry, we suppose that uh, we, we need to extract the geometry characteristics of alphabets on numerical contours. So the basic line segments from the character skeleton will be extracted. And we will use some training set which will generate these vectors and later use these training sets with the neural network based automated pattern recognition systems. So there are some pre-processing required for this character geometry. One of them is um, extracting the scanned document and then uh, use a process called binar binarization to perform the characters. We also have to remove the noise from the extracted alphabets and finally we have to do a skeletonization on the characters. Moving on, uh, we have to define two uh, terms over here, which is one of them is universe of disclosure and one of them is zoning. So the smallest metric which includes and is capable of fitting the scatter skeleton is known as uh, universe of disclosure. Here in the, in the picture we have shown in the part A the input image and after the universe of this disclosure we are going to show the part B which is um, fitted in a proper skeleton. The method of zoning is applied when which divides the image into several windows of identical dimensions. So for this paper, for this project, we have two separate types of zoning where the input image was sliced into nine equal sized images. Um, for the character geometry recognition, we have some initiators uh, we have some um, initiators, some um, intersections and minor initiators. So to start with initiators, these are the pixel pixels that have only one neighbor in the skeleton of the character. And uh, it, this evaluates the initiators first and stores them in the list well before the traversal of the character skeleton starts. So in the figure, we have shown the initiator for the alphabet A. 
where it can be seen that um, both it starts from the bottom so from this once we start the traversal it stores these two initiators first then we move on to the intersections if a pixel has more than one neighbors then it can be undefined as intersection the, the term two neighbors is associated with this and a more clear definition of intersections can be deduced based on the number of two neighbors as a pixel has so a figure has been shown again so here we see that in the middle of um, the V shape, the reverse V shape, uh, uh, a horizontal line is intersecting. So these two points have true neighbors and it will be denoted as intersections and stored in the list. So uh, the third part is the minor initiators. The minor initiators are not initially a part of traversing the skeleton, rather they recognize while the traversing is ongoing. So current line segment will be discontinued and unexplored pixels shall be stored at minus minors initiators. Uh, as well, uh, we have knowledge now about the different parts of uh, the character skeleton. We are gonna look how to traverse them. So traversal st starts with the initiators list, and after the processing is done, the minor initiator list comes to the queue for further processing. This algorithm stops all the joining lines and all the position of the respective pixels. Once all the pixels on the alphabet skeleton have been explored, the process terminates. So here we have shown like how these um the the lines the initiators and the, and the intersections are stored in a matrix so the, uh, this matrix shows the respective starters initiators and minor starters so now that we know how to traverse uh, the character geometry we're gonna uh, define differentiate between these line divisions so every time a line division is extracted from an alphabet um, a direction vector is also associated to identify each line type a naming convention has been established um, with respect to the center pixel uh, like in the 3 into 3 matrix given in the picture below so the C over here is the center pixel and the location we find is like if the data matrix takes to 1 or 5 we say it's vertical when it says 2 or 6 we say it's right diagonal when it's 3 or 7 we say it's horizontal and when it says the location is 4 or 8 we say it's left diagonal so extracting the features now after we uh, figure out the lines so any particular number of lines we can figure out with this equation which is 1 minus nl by 10 into 2 where nl is the total number of segments and the normalized length of a line can be found by dividing the total number of pixels in the line by the total number of pixels in that zone so euro number is the number of objects minus the number of holes in that object and the regional area is the ratio of the total number of pixels in a skeleton to the total number of pixels in that image So those are the basics of the character recognition um, for the character geometry. Next, we move on to see some of the to explore some of the artificial neural network. Uh, artificial neural network. First, we start with the back propagation neural network. So back propagation neural network is a teaching network that trains a particular network based on a given set of predetermined learning set, which consists of sample of input and the respective proper output. During the forward propagation technique, there are actually two propagation techniques, the forward and the backward. The forward propagation technique has the input layer conveys the message, the layer that is hidden and sends to the output. While in the back propagation, the neural network automatically sends the error values to the propagate backwards in the network while each time making trivial changes to the weights of the layers. So and now that we have some basic knowledge the, about the back propagation neural network, we're going to see another type of neural network which is known as the learning vector organization or the LVQ. A -N -N. So the pattern recognition take this pattern recognition technique is, it represents each of the output as a class or category. Codebook or reference vector represents the weight vector for a particular output unit. The training session consists of adjusting the weights and at the same time positioning the output units in order to evaluate the decision theory of base classifier. Once the training phase has passed, the linear vector quantization neural network classifies the input by indexing with the output that has the closest weight vector to the input. Uh, the final and the last type of neural network we're going to discuss is the self-organizing maps. Um, the pioneer of this kind of maps is um, 
uh, known as Conan, and he came up with the panoramic concept of self organized maps, which basically attempts at revealing the topology maps by utilizing the nearby content networks in the brain. So, multi dimensional spaces can be evaluated by these maps via mining invariant attributes of input signals. So, this S, like self organized map, is capable of evaluating point density function of a compound multi dimensional input in 2D by locally storing its local features. Next, we move on to the gray level difference method. Um, some statistical properties such as the density function variance mean expectation can be calculated at every point of an image, and this could be utilized to perform analysis of textures. So now we are moving to the texture recognition uh, rather than the pattern recognition and the category recognition. So difference between the absolute gray level and the average gray level will give us um, a an idea of the texture recognition, the texture um, density. So if we consider two-dimensional coordinate system where del x and del y is different in the x and y coordinates then we can define the displacement vector as equation 5 and then we can from equation 5 we can go and define the probability density function fxy so if you consider like a particle image has like m level of grays in it so therefore it will form a vector of m dimension and the uh, jet model of a probability density function of j itself so the probability density function is denoted by d of i of sigma and it's defined as the i of sigma equals probability of the pdf fxy equals to i. So this algorithm can deduce uh, four values of sigma which depends on the inner sampling space L and the values of sigma are considered as 0L minus LL, L0 and minus LL. So in the next part of the video I'm gonna discuss the results and simulation and I'm also gonna display some of the um, code in MATLAB that is simulated for this purpose.